fun fact, wala siyang columns. Dubai is well known for their beautiful buildings and luxurious executions of architecture. And in this video, we're gonna explore their latest addition, the Museum of the Future! Located near the main road of Dubai, the Museum of the Future is surely a distinct landmark from now on. The architect, Sean Killa of Killa Design, divided this project into three main parts. The hill, the building, and the void. Each representing an aspect of our existence. The hill is where the building rests. It's a sloping form that gently elevates the building to be higher than the metro line. It serves as a transition from the main road network of the area to the actual entrance of the building itself. The firm mentioned that this component of the design represents the earth rooted in place, time, and history. The next aspect is the building itself. This eye-shaped structure will really catch your eye. At first glance, it looks very different from the tall and futuristic skyscrapers that we envision. And that's actually the point. The form of the building itself was meant to be in contrast from the current Dubai skyline and from the typical future that everyone imagines. It represents us, mankind, and our ability to both adapt and stand out from our surroundings. The building facade is wrapped with quotes from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, which also doubles as windows to allow natural light to enter the building. According to Tobias Bolli, the project director of the engineering consulting agency that the museum had, the construction of this building was really a big challenge. Not just in how the building will stand, which we'll get to more later, but also how all the ducts, pipes, wires will maneuver around the building without obscuring the views from the calligraphy facade. He also claimed that the use of BIM and modeling scripts was actually necessary to pull off something this complex. The last part of the design is the void. That's this hole right here. This is meant to represent our unknown and unwritten future. Part of this project was to give light into the innovators and creators of today, helping the world fill that gap as we continue to explore for the betterment of our society. Okay, now we know the building and what it means, but we still haven't talked about one thing. How can it stand without columns? Bear with me, it's gonna get technical for a bit. This building makes use of what's called a diagrid system. This is a structural framework system where the members are at the exterior of the building rather than being inside. It makes use of diagonal members, which okay are arguably essentially columns, for the frame. This allows for the interior to be more open and less needy for columns or extensive vertical support. This means that buildings using this system are more flexible in terms of shape, which results into buildings like these. The Gherkin in London, the Aldar headquarters in Abu Dhabi, and of course, the Museum of the Future. Although, in the earlier stages of this system, it's just used as an added support to the columns inside. With a hybrid of the typical post and lintel structure, plus a diagrid that envelops the building, the engineers and architects are given more flexibility in terms of column width, structural soundness, and even the layout of the floors itself. But now, and also here in the Museum of the Future, as the technology advances more and more, specialists are finding ways into limiting the internal columns to practically none when using a diagrid system. Hence why this building has an unobstructed interior. Okay, end of the nerd talk, let's talk about the floors. The building has seven floors, four of which are for the main exhibits, one floor for the kids' playground, one for the exhibition hall, and one for the lobby, which is where our journey begins. Right upon entry, the tour starts. This lobby is insane. The overall design language of the museum's facade is carried inside this lobby. The calligraphy extends all throughout the space. The space also gives a glimpse of how futuristic this museum is. From the elevator pods to this robot bird just flying around the lobby. Okay. I try to make it flat on the glass. Okay. Yeah. Our first stop is the future. Well, specifically year 2071. We got on board a space pod and went on our way to OSS Hope, a future space station to spearhead missions that are planned for our future. An example of which is the idea of harnessing energy from the sun through placing a solar panel ring around the moon and reflecting it back to Earth. In theory, this will be enough to supply a 24-7 clean energy for our planet. This entire first part of the museum is set to look like the inside of a space station. 
They've 3D printed the finishes and had mock models of the equipments that will be up there when it launches. And before exiting, we also passed by the recruitment center, which they had to see what will look like in full okay. space gear. And here you are, Astro Fleet Pilots. And let's just say the look does not suit everyone. <laughs> After that, we went back to Earth. But remember, it's still the year 2071, so Earth looks a little bit different, to say the least. At this point, we have the likes of flying cars, maglev buildings, and even a full-scale DNA lab. We're inside the research laboratory of Heal, the one you guys just saw and they have preservations of almost every species insects plants yeah it's really nice the heel institute also has an area for newly formulated species some are derived from species that we already have while some are completely new ones i know what you're thinking and yep 2071 is ideally that advanced this third part is my favorite part because it tackles the future in such a different way. This section is called Alwaha, which translates into the oasis. This area explains that in this future, where we currently are in this tour, things got so advanced that the people got even more detached with each other. The museum said that by the year 2035, anxiety and depression peaked due to this very reason. Hence, our society has created areas for therapy like this one. The main attraction of this part is the movement therapy, which is at the center of the whole space. A quick way to describe it is it's like a carpet that moves along as you step on it. Like quicksand but carpet version? I don't know if I'm making sense. But around this giant carpet are the different rooms that are designed to relax your senses, so you bet we took our time with them. All you have to do is go mm, through the speaker. We're at the uh, fourth part of this tour, this museum. It's called Tomorrow Today. It explores the advancements of technology we have right now and what will we have in the future. Robots, there's a robot dog, there's advanced drones. They're presenting something about cell-based food, how will we possibly live in space, the space pods, space shuttles, and possible home in, on a different planet. It's very interesting, very futuristic of course, I mean, Museum of the Future. It's like this, it's about uh, renewable sources of energy that we could possibly harness in Earth and outside Earth. Really cool, it's really cool. It's also really quiet. That's why I'm lowering my voice. Okay, let's go. We're here, we're at the top of, not at the top, we're at the viewing deck of the Museum of the Future. It's very windy, I don't know if you guys can hear me. But yes, we're here. It's very beautiful. Amazing, amazing museum. Oh, and one more thing. Remember those elevator pods from earlier? It's the quickest way to get around the floors. The floor selection is also a touchscreen, but at this point, that's not really a surprise anymore. We also stopped briefly in the playground area on the second floor, which is called Future Heroes. We're gonna go get coffee. Okay, I don't know why I was surprised that the museum cafe is a robo cafe, which means the barista serving the drinks is a robot. More like a robot arm, to be honest. Overall, the museum was, in short, amazing. You really get a glimpse of the future that we're hoping to have. As the AI tour guide once said at the very beginning, the stuff here are not imaginations. They're challenges that we hope to achieve one day. It's our duty to use the knowledge that we gained from this trip to 2071 to help us today, which is exactly what the museum is doing. Apart from educating the people through the tour, this museum also houses the Dubai Future Foundation, which aims to enable innovators and creatives to continue unlocking the possibilities of our future and slowly fill that void 
of the unknown. Yeah, pretty much it. When you guys have the chance, go here. It's a really good experience. It's different from any other museum here in Dubai because it focuses on what we can do as a society in to achieve the future that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!